Hey, what is up guys? So we're going to be checking out a replay between the new Exodias versus the new Phantom Knight archetype. I haven't really looked too much in depth about the Phantom Knights, but they got this card Fog Blade, which is very similar to Fiendish Chain. And uh, maybe if you guys uh, don't have Fiendish Chain, you can maybe run this. It's very similar, although it can't be targeted for attacks. Like, you can't target that monster uh, that is being Fiendish Chain or Fog Bladed uh, to be attacked, essentially. That's the one real downside. But nonetheless, let's go and check out this uh, replay, and then uh, we'll kind of break it down so you guys can first see if you want to maybe understand how this archetype works. And then um, you guys can also see the new Exodia stuff, which I've actually already shown off, so I won't really mention too much of the Exodia effects. But uh, we'll break it down. We'll, we'll talk more about the Phantom Knights right after the replay plays out real quick. Uh, but look at that. He's got a 4,000 attacking Exodia plus Exod Flame set up right here. Looking real good for the Exodia player. Uh, I don't really know Phantom Knights too well. Like I said, is, I'm pretty new to the archetype as well. But it seems like you just want to dump cards in the graveyard because they get all, you know, of course, effects in the graveyard. You know, not necessarily like Light Swarm. Well, I mean, there's a few Light Swarm that can really benefit in the graveyard, but... Uh, for the most part, you want Judgment Dragon. I don't know what the boss monster of this deck is, but I do know that the deck really likes to get cards in the graveyard as quickly as possible. He summons 8, Mask Hero, Dark Law. There's a 5,000, at one point it was 6,000, attacking Exodia. Look at that, he's going to go ahead and attack. Uh, now, he protects his own card uh, with Phantom Sword over here, so if it would be destroyed by Battle of Our Card Effect, he can destroy this card instead. But look, he still has 2... 3,000 attacking Zodias, and he's going to go ahead and banish those cards to special summon the uh, Phantom Knights. I think this is their, like, boss monster, essentially, of the deck, but uh, because there's the Mass Hero Dark Law uh, out on board, that really helps out getting those cards banished. I mean, I if I was the Exodia player here, I'd be scratching my head. It's like, yo, I just made two monsters with absurd amounts of attack. Yeah, even had 6,000 attack. What's going on here, yu gi And he's, this guy's able to come back this Phantom Knight deck is completely destroying the Exodia deck. Wow, that was so freaking sweet. Sto Stoic Anarchist. That was a really awesome replay. Let's go and break it down. Let's check out the effects of the actual Phantom Knight monsters. Alright, so now that we've seen what the deck can do and what the uh, deck is all about, essentially. So he makes a first turn Dante. So let's go ahead and actually read the effects and let's talk more about the archetype. So he's going to go ahead and uh, Dante, well he summons both of them, then he goes ahead and uh, detaches the uh, Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. So if you control a Phantom Knight monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon one of them per turn, and then you can banish this card from your rear to add one Phantom Spell or Trap card from your deck to your hand, except for Horn of the Phantom Beast. Perhaps that's just not part of the archetype. But then uh, you can only use this effect of him once per turn. Now as material, he has the Phantom Knights of Rugged Glove. So you can banish the card from your grave to send one Phantom Knight's card or one phantom spell and trap card except for horn of the phantom beast this is like except frog the jam written all over this thing <laughs> but uh, uh from the deck of the graveyard a dark xyz monster that was summoned using this card as material gains that effect so it gains a thousand attack you can only use each of effect of it once per turn so that's kind of uh those two cards there and then um he goes ahead and he ends up uh milling another one of these and then um he actually banishes one of the uh silent boots to add one uh, silent, or uh, uh, silent, <laughs> he adds one of the uh, phantom cards uh, from his uh, deck to his hand, a spell or trap. And then he also sent Phantom Wing to the graveyard. So with this card, you get to target one face up monster on the field, he gains 500 attack. If you do, once during this turn, it can't be destroyed by battle by card effect. So you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Phantom Knight monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use this effect of Phantom Wing once per turn. So, um, because monsters aren't counted as uh, on the field when they are material, that actually can be a, a real good benefit. I'm sure some of you guys already know that, and, you know, you know defissure when you detach material still goes to the graveyard. So he goes ahead and sets two cards over here, so he's got the Veil. So the Veil actually makes it so um, it, it you get to target one monster you control it gains 300 attack and defense when your opponent declares an attack. Uh, a direct attack while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card for your graveyard as a normal monster that's level 4 with 0 attack and 300 defense in defense position. This card is not a trap card. Uh, if summoned this way, banish it when it leaves the field. I like how it's interesting that this card is not a trap card, even though it's a tra it says trap card on it. Well, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! now. Anyways, Foolish Burial, 1 for 1, um, he's going to go ahead and center formula. And like, even though you go super minus in this deck, it doesn't really matter. Like, all it comes down to is you just summon the summon Lord Exodia, 
and then uh, you just have a good time from there. So he's just going to keep on sending cards to the graveyard, and then he's going to go ahead and banish another one of the Silent Boots, of course, to add one of the uh, Phantom Knight's card from his uh, deck to his hand, and he goes ahead, well, for some reason it's like all wonky here. Okay, there we go. Uh, it wasn't letting me highlight over the correct card, but he's able to search out a few, few cards for free And that's basically what the deck likes to do again when you send them to the graveyard and then when you manage them You get other effects. There was also another card in here That I thought was really interesting. It's called Doom Do Doomsday Horror So the attack and defense of this card are equal to the number of banished dark monsters times 300 Which is a pretty decent effect if you get a bunch of cards banished But you're mainly going to be using it for the other effect when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard You get to return all banished dark monsters to the graveyard. So that means, uh, let's say you have a bunch of them. Not only is going to have strong attack, but when he dies and goes to the graveyard, he gets to put all of them back. Then you can rebanish them all and get multiple, multiple effects. So that's pretty crazy stuff here. So uh, here's the Fog Blade. It's basically like Phoenix Chain, except for you can't attack that monster. So he goes ahead and activates double Shadow Veal. It just makes it so this card has extra attack, and then they're also in the graveyard. Uh, and then he also gets a draw card because a card trooper, but. Man, let Exodia right there with 3k attack, and he has Exiled Flame, so he can bounce stuff back. Pretty good stuff, and so this guy's playing passively. Then we have the Knight of Fragile Armor. So if a face-up Phantom Knight monster you control is destroyed by battle over a card effect, you can spell summon this card from your hand. Then you can banish this card from your rear to send one Phantom Knight's card or Phantom Knight spell slash trap card from your hand to the rear, except for a Horn of the Phantom Beast. And then you get to draw one card. You can only use each of effect of it once per turn, so a little decent little card over there. But it uh, feels like this deck can be a little bit, you know, RNG, you have to get lucky sometimes. Sometimes you mill like, you know, the wrong cards, you mill the MSTs, you mill like the Solemns. It kind of does suck. I mean, I've seen Burning Abyss players mill the Wars, or they have to mill triple of like the same Burning Abyss. Um, although in this deck, it, it's not like you need to worry about that that much, because you can banish them later on, whereas uh, Burning Abyss, you know, it's basically that turn. <laughs> but anyways, he goes ahead and protects his card. He's got a 5,000 Exodia, a double 5,000 Exodias. And now they're back at 3,000, but still, that's pretty strong. I'm, if I was in the Exodia player's position, I'd be like, dude, I've already won this game. But uh, nonetheless, he's going to go ahead and uh, special summon, uh, and, and um, I don't know which one he normal or something. But uh, anyways, he gets out double monsters, then he's going to go ahead and uh, actually use that card's effect. Oh, if I could target it. It's, um... This is one where it gains 800. Okay, so yeah, if this card is an attack position. You target one dark monster field, change it to defense position, which of course you've just, I think, moved glove to defense position. Uh, or he guess you can move this one, he can move it straight back because it hasn't changed its battle position. And then it gains 800 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's next turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard to add one, the Phantom Knight's card from your deck to your hand, except for the Phantom Knight's dusty robe. You can use only a, each of an effect once per turn, and then the glove has the effect where it's going to boost up whatever you summon by a thousand attack. So uh, you can manage to cover from your river to summon one Phantom Knight's uh, card or one Phantom Spell and Trap card, except for Horn of the Phantom Beast to the graveyard, and then again against a thousand attack. I think he banished this one. Um, the specials. Okay, so I think he banished one of these to special summon one of the other guys, and that's how he got that card out. Then he's going to go ahead and uh, get that uh, boost of a thousand. Then he's going to crash. Uh, over one, and then that one's gonna. Uh, I guess he's going to activate this card. To, does this keep it bring it back? Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. So once per turn, you attach one tier from this card, then target one card to each side of the field, destroy them. If this card, as XYZ card, is destroyed, you can target two Phantom Knight monsters with the same level in your graveyard and special summon them, increase their levels by one. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except dark monsters. That's actually pretty crazy for an effect. So I guess they're, they should be level four at this point then. And then on top of this, you can go into, I don't know, Black Ship of Corn. That's actually a pretty good effect. Oh, and then he banishes it, and then Spongebob summons it back again. Oh my gosh. And then he goes for a Dark Rebellion right after that. Um, I wonder what other, like, let's, let's check out this. I want to see if he has any, like, other, like, obscure cards. Okay, so there's not, not any other, like, new cards. I guess this is their boss monster, but that's a pretty strong little boss monster over there. Uh, it can gain a thousand attack, because if you use that one card's material, and I'm sure this Exodia player here is like, what the heck is going on? That's a really, really cool deck. It almost reminds me of Burning Abyss. Like, they just like, it's like the new Burning Abyss. Like, this card is crazy. It's like, you know how, like, Graph and they get a bunch of free monsters. But like this, like, you get multiple monsters. Then you have access to rank fours. 
And I'm sure all you guys know, rank 4 monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! are pretty much like the bread and butter of this game. Like, majority of the great cards like Castell, uh, 101, Exiton Knight, Psychic, it's banned. Well, you know, it'll probably eventually come back. I feel like it should come back. But, uh, nonetheless, that's a pretty cool archetype, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. And it looks, like, a lot better. I've seen a few people try out the deck, and, uh, this guy actually knows how to play it a lot better. Like, he's going, uh, like a turbo version. I think that's the way to go. Gotta be fast this day and age in Yu-Gi-Oh! But thanks for the replay. Stoic Anarchist, but thanks for watching guys. Let me know what you guys think of the archetype. Do you guys think this guy, uh, this deck is really good, or do you guys think it's like, meh? Uh, compared to what's coming out in the game, I don't think it can do very much, but, you know, uh, the whole pendulum mechanic is just so strong in the game. We'll have to see what they decide to, like, hit with that, uh, the whole, like, Perform Pal Pepe archetype. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. It's been your boy Will Smith, signing out.